So up next is uh, Justin and Pat my PC. Uh, I introduced him this morning, but I'm pretty sure he's going to introduce himself again. The session will be recorded, uh, just you know, just in case. But Justin, how do you how do you prefer questions after or during? Uh, during's fine. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we uh, so we are like 70 in the room, so you know, just shout your questions, and I'll repeat them to Justin, and then uh, yeah, from there. It's all yours, Justin. Good morning. Okay, great. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, so my name's Justin Chalfont. I am the engineering lead over here at Patch My PC. A little background on what we do, in case you don't know. Uh, so we develop a third-party update catalog that you can use to publish updates into Configuration Manager. Um, we, we have a few different ways that we can do this. I'll cover kind of the two most common ones. Uh, so one's going to be using our publishing utility. And then the other is going to be the new feature introduced in Config Manager 1806 current branch, where you can uh, essentially add a third-party catalog, and then SCCM can automatically publish them for you natively in the console. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I wish we could be there today. It was kind of last minute. I think that Kent confirmed us sometime last week, but we will actually be out uh, next month in Sweden and Norway's group so if, I know that's kind of close so if any of you guys are around love to see you there I know David James will also be there from the product group as well uh, just now you don't know much about Scandinavia but you don't want to mix things with sweets so just, just... <laughs> All right, um, so uh, what I have going on in our site that we'll be doing the demo today in, it, it's just uh, this lab here, it's pretty pretty vanilla, so we don't have any type of configurations done. Uh, in fact, we don't even have software updates synchronized yet. Um, so I'm going to basically go through the process of really what the full setup would look like, just to give you an idea of how simple it can be to integrate our third-party update catalog and get updates automatically publishing into your site. So the first thing that I'm going to do here within our lab is I'm going to go ahead and download our publishing service. Um, so it's just a small MSI. It's only about a meg that would actually run on your software update point. The, the only purpose really of this publishing service or utility is to synchronize our catalog metadata. So that's going to be just a small XML essentially that contains all the latest information about the products we support as well as any future updates. Um, and then based on the products that we're going to enable in our, in our service, that's going to determine whether it needs to publish any updates and as well as automatically publishing any new updates for products that you support in the future. So um, pretty simple what we're doing here. So the, the first option that we have within our publishing service is going to be the actual catalog download, right? So that's going to be where we're actually getting our metadata. So this is going to be our catalog file. So if you were to subscribe to us, you would get a, a link that would be uh, where, where it's going to download all the metadata from. Uh, and that's going to be how we determine what to publish. The next option, so if you've used SCUP in the past, System Center Update Publisher, or really any utility that publishes third-party updates to WSUS and SCCM, we do need to sign the updates that we download. So when we, when we publish them up, they do need to be code signed from a certificate that you, you manage. Uh, in order to ensure that our clients have some type of trust level with the third-party update since they're not coming from Microsoft. So we really have two different options here. One is going to be we can generate a self-signed certificate directly from our utility, similar to the way that you can also generate a self-signed certificate if you're using SCUP previously. The second option is going to be that you can import a PFX certificate, which would be a code signing cert that you could get from either uh, internal Active Directory certificate server, or you could even use a third-party CA like DigiCert. So for this demo, what we're going to do, we're going to create a self-signed certificate. So we do have some custom options here where you can change the length of your certificate if you wanted to, as well as the strength. So I'll go ahead and generate the self-signed certificate here, and that's what we'll use for this demo. Okay. So that looks good. So as far as prereqs, that's that's pretty much what we need. We need to have our catalog subscription. If you wanted to use the trial uh, subscription, you could just enable this checkbox here. Um, so there's no length limitation on the trial. 
really what would happen if you enable the trial when you go over to the products tab instead of having a full list of you know the 150 plus unique products that would be scoped down to about six products that we support within the trial so the next option once we get our certificate in place and our subscription you need to determine what you want to publish right so uh, I'll include this link in the Skype window just so Kent can send that out but basically if you go to our website patchmypc.com we do have a supported products page um, this is going to list out all the products that we support so currently it's about 270 updates that are unique across about 152 different products now if there's a product that you have within your environment that we don't currently have within our catalog we're always open to taking new requests and that's no additional cost uh, really the only thing that we would require would be that the application has a silent command line that the installation works under system context and that we have some type of detection method that we can use for determining whether it's installed and outdated. Uh, most apps work pretty well with all of them, especially if you're already deploying them through Config Manager. Uh, generally, they're, they're going to support all those options that I just mentioned. So for this demo, what we're going to do is jump over to Java. So we do have a machine here with an outdated version of Java that we we'll use for this demo. Uh, we do have some customizations that we can do for each update as well. Um, so in our current version, if we have a right-click option for each of these products, uh, so we have a few options here. We can switch from metadata or full content. So full content is going to actually download the update file, and it's going to be available for you to deploy an SCCM and download to an update package. If you were to use metadata only, that's going to give you all the scan data and SCCM about the update, but you won't actually have to go out and download the content for all these different products, but you could see how many machines actually need it. Uh, we have some options here around killing the process. So, for example, for Java, I'll enable that option to kill any Java processes before we actually start the update. We also have an option for skipping the update if the process is running, and then it will just attempt during the next software update uh, deployment and evaluation cycle. What we've done this past week, so this feature was actually released on Monday, we now give you the ability, if you need to, where you can define any type of pre or post script uh, for each update that we have within our catalog. So for Java, this will be a good example. If we look at the post update script, what I'm going to do is go ahead and define something custom here uh, within our um, source folder here. So if I look at my scripts, what we're do for Java, we have just a simple batch file. So you can use batch, VB script, or PowerShell today. Um, so we could run any type of those scripts. But what we're doing for this post update script, let's say for example, you forgot to, to disable the self-update feature of Java during your initial application deployment in Config Manager. Uh, what we're doing in this post-update script is we're basically disabling the Java self-updater for the 32 and the 64-bit version of Java. Uh, we're also disabling the scheduled task that starts up, and then we'll kill any Java update processes if they're currently running on the device. Um, so that's just... Uh, you know, you could get as flexible as you want. Maybe you have some configurations that you want to make sure that are in place post-update, and you just want to set a few reg keys or really anything that you can do within a script. Um, that's where these post scripts can come and be quite helpful, right? Uh, one thing that we are looking at adding, and probably within the next month or two, is the ability for some additional right-click actions for products for doing other common things like deleting the public desktop shortcut, uh, disabling the self-update feature uh, when available, so you don't have to necessarily have a custom script if you only wanted to do things like delete a shortcut or disable the self-update. Um, the other update that we'll enable for this demo is Firefox. So we do have a Firefox out here. And for the Firefox update, what we'll do is add a post-update script as well. For this one, it's just another uh, you know, demo script. But what we're doing is we'll delete all the desktop shortcuts that are on the public desktop for any application we support within our catalog. We do make this script available for download if that's something that you wanted to add as your own custom uh, post-update script. And then what we'll do, we'll go enable all the Adobe updates. Um, but what we'll do for those, just so we can save some time, 
we're going to switch those to only publish with metadata only instead of full content so we won't actually have to go and download the content files. Another thing that my team is going to be working on is giving you an option uh, within this products tab to scan the config manager database and look at the hardware inventory data for add or remove programs. Uh, so what we want to do is basically analyze the number of installs for each product within this uh, pane that we support so you can easily determine what's actually out in your environment before you even start publishing updates. So that's a feature that we're going to be looking at in one of our, our next releases where, where it can make it just easier to understand, hey, these are the 200 or, or so updates that Patch My PC supports. Let me determine what I actually have and then based on a certain threshold, um, so we're thinking we'll give you like a, a number to say, hey, if you have more than 10 instances of any product installed, automatically check that, enable it for publishing with full content. Um, but I think this is probably good, at least for this demo. We've got Adobe, Java, and Firefox, and we also have some custom actions for Java and Firefox running as well. Uh, the next option here is going to be our scheduling. Um, so I am going to enable the option here to automatically sync our config manager software update point after publishing. So what that's going to uh, make sure happens is whenever new third-party updates are published, we're going to automatically trigger a software update point sync so they, they show up in SCCM pretty much right away after they become published. Um, so what I did there is I just triggered the first synchronization. So what that's going to do is it's going to get our catalog. So if we look at our log file, um, what's going to happen is it's going to start triggering the publishing of updates. So we can see it started publishing all the Adobe updates. That went quite quickly because it was only publishing with metadata. Now for the, uh, for the Java and um, Firefox update, it's going to take a few minutes just because it has to go download the content. Um, but the way the scheduling feature works, so anytime we release a new catalog update, which is generally about three to four times a week, uh, we're pretty quick as far as testing and turnaround. Usually if an update's released by about 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, uh, we usually get that out the same day uh, by about 2 or 3 p.m. Mountain Time. So that would probably be closer to the evening. Um, so you could configure the schedule based on however you want. But just looking over here at our RSS feed, so we can see that we, we had about three, three updates last week, three updates the week before. Uh, so when we release an update, you can subscribe to our email newsletter or you can kind of monitor this RSS feed. So for each catalog update that we do, we're going to give you information about each new update within that release. So for example, we can see that we had an update for Chrome last month. Uh, we're going to list out any type of CV IDs for that update. We're going to give you the release notes so you could quickly jump over and see more details about the release if you wanted. And with any update binary file that we release for any catalog update, we do, we do run everything through a virus total scan. So we're going to give you the scan results uh, for each binary that we test to ensure that um, you know, we're doing our due diligence to make sure that their installers don't contain any type of bloatware or malware. Uh, and we're going to give those scan results for every single file that, that we release within our catalog. Uh, so yeah, so the schedule, that's going to be how often you want the service to check out and say, hey, are there any new updates for the products I enabled? If there are, it's going to go ahead and automatically publish. So by default, it's every night. Um, so we basically pick updates right when we release them that same day. Um, but if you didn't want to publish that frequently, you could change this to a weekly or a monthly or even align it with Patch Tuesday if you wanted. Uh, the next feature is going to be email. So uh, whenever new updates are published, we can enable SMTP settings to send out an uh, email that will just notify you of all the updates that were published to your site. Uh, and then in the advanced, uh, not too much here. This, this option to delay expiring of updates can be helpful. Um, so if you have a long testing cycle, uh, it might be helpful to delay publishing a older version so you can delay the expiration of that, similar to how you can delay uh, superseding updates in your software update point. So if you have a long testing cycle for updates that release quite frequently, so for example, Chrome usually has about one update a week, 
Um, this would this would make it so that previous version doesn't automatically get expired. You can delay that for up to 30 days. So you could still have that previous version being deployed and active within Config Manager uh, for up to that threshold if you did have a longer testing cycle to make sure that you know the, the previous one doesn't keep getting expired and you don't have enough testing cycles to actually get get the current version deployed. Uh, we do also have some dashboards available that I'll show you later on in the video, um, but those dashboards are actually free, so you don't even have to have a subscription. You can just install the publishing service, and then you can run through the dashboard installer just through this advanced tab. Um, so when I'm going through the dashboards, just take a note, that's totally free. Um, you can just download and, and, and install those as well. Um, but what, what looks like happened, it looks like we are now done with our publishing operation. So within our log file, um, we do log out in a format uh, that supports CM Trace. We will give you details about all the updates that were published within the log. Uh, we're going to tell you whether it was metadata only or whether it was full content. Now, since we had our software update point set to synchronize, we automatically sent the sync file into Config Manager. So then if we go ahead and open our WSync Manager log, what we can see is that our software update point was automatically triggered and we've automatically synced all these updates into Config Manager. Um, so at this point, we're pretty much good to go. Uh, we really wouldn't have to do anything else in the publishing service. It would just automatically run for you in the future and automatically publish any new uh, new updates for the products you enable. The only time that you might want to come back in our, our, our settings tool would be maybe if we release a new product that you didn't have previously checked, you would just have to come in here just uh, whenever that update was released for that product uh, to enable that new product. So jumping over to our email, since we had the email option enabled, uh, we're going to send you an email report that says, hey, these updates were published with full content. So that's our two updates for Java and Firefox. And then we also have all our Adobe updates that were published with metadata only. Um, so that looks good. If you sign up for our newsletter for just our main catalog release, so when we make updates available, not necessarily when they get published, uh, if you sign up for that, this is what the email looks like. It's similar to that RSS feed. So we'll give you information about the release notes, the virus total scans that we performed on each update, as well as any security uh, CV IDs uh, associated with any release that we did within a catalog update. So at this point, we are pretty much good to go. Since our software update point auto-synced, if we go ahead and refresh our all software updates, we can now see that these updates have already started showing up because they synchronized. Um, so we can see that the Firefox and Java update, uh, they're showing up with the normal green icon. That means that they are published with full content and you would be able to deploy them now. Uh, since the Adobe updates were metadata only, that means that you're going to get scan data once our clients check in over here, but if you wanted to actually deploy these, you would have to come back and switch them to full content in order to actually have them download and deploy. So within our lab, what we have set up is just an ADR. So these updates are actually already deployed because our ADR ran when our software update point was automatically triggered. Uh, but what we're basically looking at in our ADR is we're saying automatically deploy any update released from Patch My PC unless it's a migration update. So we do have a few migration updates for migrating from Firefox to Firefox ESR, as well as doing a migration from Java 6 and Java 7 uh, to Java 8, so doing a major migration. So we're just excluding any of those migration updates in the title. Um, so we can see that we have those two updates that we published with full content that are showing up here. So these updates, the ADR automatically uh, downloaded them and deployed them. So we can see that they're already in our update package that's already gone out to our distribution points. Um, and they, they automatically got created in a software update group and they're being deployed. So what's nice about that is we're using all your existing infrastructure to actually uh, deploy these updates. So you don't have to worry about any additional clients or any additional server infrastructure because they're all going to be uh, you know, using your existing distribution points for content and they're going to use your existing config manager client for your actual uh, scanning and installation of updates. Now with that said, that means that we also have all the same deployment options. So we can configure the user experience. So whether you want to use maintenance windows 
uh, whether you want to suppress restarts. Uh, so all of those same options, whether you want to make updates visible or make them completely hidden, all of those options that you'd be using today for deploying Microsoft updates are really going to be exactly the same as, you know, as our third-party updates. There's no difference uh, in that actual deployment process. Um, so that looks good. So if we jump over to our client, oh, one thing I did want to mention is we are running Config Manager 1806. So what happened on the back end, there's a new option within our software update point to enable third-party updates. So I did enable this option. So what that's going to do, we have Config Manager set to manage the certificate that we created through our service. So what that means is that it's going to automatically deploy that certificate out to your clients so that they trust the code signing certificate that we generated. So um, we don't even have to worry about deploying that certificate out. Now, if you're not on 1806 yet, that's not an issue. We could just deploy our certificate out using group policy. Uh, and what we've also done is we've enabled the new client setting. This was actually released in Config Manager 1802 to enable third-party software updates. So what this, what this policy is going to do is it's going to set the local group policy on all your clients that you deploy this setting to to enable them to install third-party updates that we publish to WSUS. So prior to 1802 and 1806, you would have just had to enable these two settings via a GPO and or you could use a package in Config Manager. Do you have a question there, Ken? I saw that kind of looked like we had some sound coming in. No. Okay, great. Um, so with that said, we've already got all our prereqs done in 1806 with the cert. So if we jump over to our client. We do have one question. Okay, great. Uh, for a small organization, what's the pricing like? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so I will cover the pricing. Uh, actually, it's, it's super simple. I could just go ahead and, and knock that out now. Um, but... Uh, so for the pricing, we've got two different options here. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go. So let me just open up kind of what we look like for pricing. So we have an option that the option I'm showing you today is the $2 per endpoint annually. So that's going to include full automation. So that's either using our publishing ser service that I'm demoing or that could also use the SECM console publishing feature in 1806. If you wanted to use SCUP only, um, so SCUP is a, a free utility from Microsoft, but it's, it's quite manual as far as the process goes. So whenever we release a catalog update, you would have to manually import it and manually publish it. Um, so most of our customers these days are going with the automation option. We do have a minimum of 500 devices, right? So if you're a smaller organization, you, you say, say you're 500 or less, and you wanted to go with the fully automated, you're looking at about $1,000 US dollars a year. So I think it's quite competitive with, with the value that you would get, especially when you're smaller, um, because our, our, our pricing, I think, is pretty competitive, especially for that smaller endpoint, uh, compared to maybe some of the other solutions that start out quite high, even if you're small. Thanks. Yep. All right. So jumping over to our client, um, what I did is I just triggered a machine policy just so we can see that new deployment coming in. Um, but what we'll notice uh, if we look at our updates deployment dot log, uh, we'll see that the client. So just on the back end, usually I like getting a, a little detail to show you what's actually happening, is the client automatically installed that certificate that we deployed to it, right? So we can see that that certificate, because um, we enabled that, that setting in our software update point in 1806, it went ahead and installed that code signing cert that we generated uh, automatically on our clients. Then we triggered our scan. So now we've got our updates essentially showing up here, right? So we've got... If we would look at Software Center, these are going to show up just like any other update that would be deployed. Since uh, we were making it visible and showing notifications, that's why we got the notification showing up here, and that's why we can see it in Software Center. Uh, so this looks good. So we'll go ahead and just start out with Firefox. 
So one thing to note is that while Firefox is installing, if we take a look at these desktop shortcuts for Firefox and Chrome, uh, what should happen since we configured the post update script is it should delete all these shortcuts that, that are you know, created via different application updates from our catalog. So there we go. We can see that the script just ran and it just uh, deleted those. Uh, since we were uh, using a custom script, if you're interested in seeing what actually happens when the script runs, we do log out the exit code as well as what we're doing. So we have a log file on the client if you enable the scripting feature in the Windows temp folder that will basically uh, give us information about the main update that we're running, but then it will also give you the post command. So we can see when the um, VBS script ran, and we'll also give you the exit code in case you're trying to troubleshoot maybe one of your, your own scripts that you defined here as a pre or post script. So that looks good. If we jump back over, I do want to show you the Java update as well. Um, so what I did in this scenario, if we go ahead and look at our Java applet and control panel, we can see that during my initial application deployment, I didn't set the updates to be disabled. Okay, so uh, what we'll notice once that uh, update is done, Actually, I want to keep this open as well. So since we enabled the kill process for Java as well, what we'll see happen when we start the installation, and let me just open this up. Um, but what we'll notice here that once the install kind of starts and it gets downloaded, it's going to automatically close this Java control panel applet uh, because we enabled that option to kill the process. So we can see that that just closed. Uh, if we also, if we look at our registry, we can see that under our Java key, we can see that our Java update policy is currently set to enabled. Um, since we enabled our post update script to disable this, what we'll notice is once we do our, our update from Java uh, 8 update 161 to Java 8 update 181, once that is done, if we look back in our script uh, runner, we'll see that it's going to run that batch file that I defined as the post update script, and that's going to be what actually sets Java update to be disabled. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Looks like the update just completed and it ran that batch. So if we jump back in our registry and refresh this, we can now see that all those values have changed to disable the Java update feature. So that looks good. So if we come back in control panel, and if we were to reopen that Java applet, we can now see that the update tab is you know, no longer visible and that the self-update feature within Java is now disabled from that post-update script. Um, so at this point, it looks good. Uh, looks like we're up to date. We went from Firefox 60 to Firefox 62, as well as from Java 8 update 161 to Java 8 181. Uh, so that's pretty much all there is as far as the core setup and installing updates. I will jump over and show you guys some of the reports. Uh, and then if we have time, I can show you the publishing feature within SCCM 1806 and how that kind of differs, uh, at least from using our own publishing service and, and kind of what those differences are. Um, so as far as reporting goes, since we are synchronizing and bringing updates in just as a software update, you could, of course, use all the native Config Manager software update reports, um, but we do also provide those dashboards uh, that we can use as well. And let me, okay, let's see what we have, uh, software updates. Let's see. Let's try to reopen this console here. Oh. Um, I'm on the wrong machine, that's why that happened. Let me jump over here. Here we go. Um, so just to show you what these dashboards look like, uh, these are free. Um, we go ahead and run our main dashboard. What this is gonna do, this is gonna give you overall compliance of all our software updates. So we're gonna break it out by workstations and by servers. Um, so we can see that we've got uh, six workstations and four servers. We then break it out by month, so we'll give you the overall compliance by month. You can then drill in for each month. So 
we're actually quite compliant because I had my ADR kick off last night and it automatically started patching so we can see that we're pretty high um, but if we jump into August it looks like we do have a couple updates that are needed um, so when we break into the updates by month we will sort by the number of updates needed on the most number of devices uh, so it looks like we're actually all good as far as third-party patches go we can see that they're all installed here um, but if we broke into one of these updates that are needed this will drill you into one of the native config manager reports where you could get what specific machines need that update. So we can we can break down and get pretty detailed about uh, what we're actually looking at from these dashboards. Uh, we then break out just different compliance charts to, to tell you different things about updates. So for example, we'll show you by operating system for clients, what's our overall compliance for these devices. Uh, we'll then also show you how many updates are missing or how, how many devices are missing a specific range of updates. So we can see we have five machines missing between one and ten updates. If we break into that, we're going to show you each device and how many updates it's actually missing. And then we just break out similar dashboards for the servers. Uh, and then the other report uh, is a dashboard for the software update group. So if you don't want to see all your software updates, but maybe you want to break it out to a specific software update group, what we can do is we can go in and run this dashboard, and then we can select the software update group that we want to base our reports on. And then it will give us overall compliance about updates just within that uh, specific software update group. Okay, so uh, like we can see, we're pretty much 100% compliant with all these updates just because they, they've automatically installed on our, all our devices. It uh, looks like we might have one update missing for the current month. So if we were to drill into that month, we'll show you, uh, you know, it looks like we have one instance of SQL Management Studio that isn't patched. Um, so here we could go in and, and drill into that update and say, what is the machine that doesn't have this third party patch? Um, so that looks good. Um, any questions before I kind of show what the 1806 feature looks like? Uh, nope. You're, you're, you're the only thing standing between 68 guys and lunch. All so, right. Yeah. So um, I'll, run, I'll, I'll run through <laughs> this pretty quickly then. Um, let's see. So let me just go grab in our catalog URL. One question. Sure. Now you have a free script to hardware to operate as a central control. I would like to inform the end user that I'm going to shut down to the control before I just forcefully shut it down. Is, is there an option to do that with the, with the free script? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so I think I got most of that. Was it around uh, interactively displaying a user message before you run any actions? Correct. Exactly. Okay, yeah, good question. So the way the, the built-in kill feature works today is um, it's not interactive right now. Um, with that said, we are at a point where we can add additional files into our, our package when we publish them. Um, so that is one of the things on our radar. Now, if you wanted to do your own pre and post script, you could probably tie in things with PowerShell to make some interactive messages using uh, maybe PSExec or, or really something else. Um, so, I, I mean, you could get pretty flexible if you're doing your own custom scripts where you could interactively come back to the desktop. Um, but if you're using just the built-in kill option, so if we come back here uh, and said kill the app, um, the way it works in the current iteration of the publishing service is it wouldn't be interactive yet, um, but I think that's going to be something that we're going to be looking at in one of our updates uh, in the future. Uh, I think we're at a point where we, now that we can add files to our package when we dynamically publish them, we could probably add something in there. Um, but if you're using your own pre or post script, I would expect that you, you know, you could probably get pretty flexible with calling different actions that could be interactive from system context. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, so jumping over to the uh, SCCM feature. So we have this new third-party update 
Oh, look at that. It looks like the... So this must have just came in uh, today, actually, maybe, maybe last night. Um, but it looks like Dell has now added their catalog as a partner catalog. So that, that could be helpful if any of you guys are a Dell shop. Um, but the way that our catalog would work is we would come in here and we would add a custom catalog. Um, so what we could do, we could come in and paste in our catalog URL. Uh, we would enter in our information here. And we go ahead and do next here. Uh, so once we add our catalog into this new catalogs node, we would go ahead and subscribe. Um, so that's going to download our catalog, and you will have to verify our certificate. So you're going to have to say, hey, this is this catalog signed by Patch My PC. I'm going to trust them, and I'm going to go ahead and import that catalog. So once that happens, um, Config Manager is going to automatically start synchronizing our catalog updates. So there's a new component called the SMS uh, ISV Update Sync Agent. So what we'll see is this uh, this log file should automatically kick in now that we're subscribed, and um, it should start syncing the updates uh, into our uh, environment here in a minute. There we go. Um, so we just downloaded our catalog. Now it's uh, adding all the certificates for updates within our catalog, and now it's publishing all these updates. Now, with the Config Manager feature, the way that it works is uh, if we come back here and I run a software update point sync, is it's going to publish all the updates within our catalog, but uh, they're going to be published with metadata only. Um, selective. Just wait for that sync to work. Um, but what we've done on our side, since the way SCCM works is it's going to basically publish everything that we have in our catalog, we did add a new feature where we could selectively import products. So the way that we do that is you we have this new product parameter that you can append to the end of your catalog URL. So if you didn't want to have all uh, all the updates published and you only wanted like Java updates or Adobe updates, you could you could add a, a subscription for just that product if you wanted instead of having all the updates import. Um, but if we come back here, if we go ahead and sync, we went up from 16 updates to 41. Now this is still publishing, so this will take a minute or two. But the key difference between the Config Manager integration is going to be when the updates synchronize here, they, the, we, we can see that they're only metadata only. So you couldn't actually deploy these yet. There's, there's a manual step that you have to do. And that's going to be you would have to come back into your console after you, you sync them and then choose to publish the content. Once we choose that publish content option, the same log file that does the sync is also going to go out and download the third party update. So here we can see it's downloading it uh, and then it's going to go out and sign it. And then once it signs it, it's going to publish it with full content. So at that point, so this was for uh, Apple mobile device support is what I chose here. Um, so now we can see that that's published. So if we do one more sync, this update's now going to show up with full content. So uh, at least in the 1806 build, there is kind of one manual step that you would have to do. You'd have to right click and choose to download the content. Uh, I know that David James has posted on Twitter they are looking to improve this process. So I don't know if that might be like an option for each catalog where you can say maybe in the properties, you know, publish all updates with full content, or maybe the Maybe it might be built into the download process that you would be doing today, like when you right click and download. Maybe it would go through and sign the update just using the native download so it could still work in ADRs. Um, but at least the way that it works today is you would have to come in and right click and, and choose, to, um, choose to publish the content before you could actually deploy it. Um, but yeah, I, I think questions at this point is where we could go, where we could go next here. I think that's most of what I had for the demo. 
uh, as far as getting this all set up and showing you how, how this works. Yeah, one question. <clears throat> there is a slight advantage to using your uh, publishing product, right? Since we can add the custom scripts. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that I would say that you do get more flexibility if you wanted to use our publishing tool versus uh, Config Manager. Um, really, that's going to be around custom actions. So. With, with Config Manager, basically they're injecting our catalog and publish everything exactly how it is. So when we build updates, we're going to give you the download URL, the command line, um, but we're really going to be limited when we're using the at least the SCCM feature because they, they're not going to know how we could dynamically do things within the updates that we build in our catalog, whereas if you're using our service, uh, we, we can give some additional options like killing or skipping or the custom scripts because we can inject those as we publish it. So uh, yeah, I, I would say it's a little more full featured with customization options um, if you wanted to have those type of flexibility for scripts and things like that. I would say the publishing service will give you more options uh, for that. One more question? Yeah. Did you hear that, Justin? Was it 24 hours? Yeah, on the on the scheduling. Yeah. Um, so the scheduling you can do hourly from one or from four to 23 hours, or if you wanted like a 24-hour period, uh, you could do daily at a specific hour. Um, would that meet the needs, or was it something else that you? Uh, I think it's because you are using AM and PM. You just want a 24-hour system. Yeah, so it's where you're looking at daily. Ah, uh, here. Yeah, yeah, you have it there as well. Yeah, so you can switch AM to PM. Um, yeah, this will go up to twelve here since it's just AM yeah. and PM. That's it. <clears throat> we just have to teach them the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? So, uh, Justin, uh, first of all, thanks a, thanks a lot for getting up this early. Oh, uh, yeah. I will um, I'll make sure that we, uh, we we publish the link to the trial catalog, and then uh, also we publish your um, your data so everybody can connect with you if you have any follow up questions. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Great. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.